So we're beginning to get this nice snaky pathway and we've got our set series of trees coming through. Um, what I want to now add is a sense of texture coming along here. So I'm gonna, again, starting with this blue. And in this case, I might even add a couple of highlights, start with some highlights, just where the moonlight is really coming into play. <laughs> and then because paths are often well-trodden structures, particularly on country roads, um, you've got nature taking over <laughs> and there are going to be clods of dirt, bits of grass and they're just popping up all over the place aren't they? So I just want to add some of those and again as we come over to here just want to use the side of the pencil and just make it appear slightly thicker. I'm going to add a little bit there, uh, uh, maybe a bit there. <laughs> and again, just to add some depth, just go in with a different colour, darker colour, just to show some contrast. Um, I kind of just want to make this section here because light might be a bit of, just a little bit of shadow over here. Not much. It's the same with this area here. We're showing that that's slightly on a hill. So we'll put this into shadow a bit, shall we? This bit here can be in shadow. So we can show some more highlights popping through <clears throat> where the light is just picking picking up those blades of grass quite nicely and maybe a couple of stones and it's just creating that kind of magical whimsical moment might even just have a couple of beams radiating through and that can just help achieve a bit more colour balance in the whole piece. So these are your little highlights. There we go. It's quite warm there even, so I'm just going to add that little bit of shine. Look at that, almost glows now. Lovely. <laughs> Here we go. So that is a nice little scene. Just going to work into this top, conscious of these changes in colour. <clears throat> now I would like a little creature in this area, I think. Um, and something that I really enjoy doing at Christmas time is having a walk with our old dog, Molly, who is unfortunately no longer with us, but she was a very carefree animal and absolutely loved going for walks. She had very floppy ears, King Charles Spaniel. Um, so I'm just going to just give the impression of of Molly. Um, so I'm just putting in some limbs and we put her here, there we go, give her a tail, just kind of fluffy long, there we go. And I'm using um, this orange quite deliberately um, against this blue because they will clash and pop out. Uh, they actually complement each other in that way um, by being as kind of uh, bold because 
coming back to some colour theory in terms of it being in a spectrum blue and orange are kind of opposite ends of each other well cyan and orange is I should say um, so having an orange undertow will help lift everything underneath um, but then I'm adding in my bits of brown but very loosely again because I just want it to be an impression of the dog and it's kind of just figurative it's not uh, an exact version of Molly at all it just gives you a sense of her um, but I want to use these blues to help bring her in and show that light and dark relationship so in the shadows I'm introducing these blues so again start with your lightest blue and if you find that you need to go darker still use your darker shades of blue and so you can apply that kind of process with any figure so you might want a fox or a hare a tractor house um family you know your family yourself could be there um and to help create that sense of harmony and balance, you're still using the same colour scheme. So there we go. Lovely, lovely Molly. Oh. You were a fabulous dog. <laughs> um, and I might just, you know, from that orange just follow up on just a couple of those highlights hardly any really just to help some of those bits really stand out there we go and now you've got this beautiful scene so the next bit is an extra um, you can do this with either like correction pens or uh, use different like material in terms of this is oil pastel that works well or you might want to use acrylic paint um and we are gonna blitz this with some snow <laughs> so i'm actually gonna go start by just using my correction pen and I'm just gonna do some dots for where some of the snow has hit hardest and they can be all over and I find that acrylic seems to do the best at um, giving that absolute white, that brilliant white, whereas um, Tippex or other types of forms of correction pen um, give this kind of not fully opaque white <laughs> when you're using it in this situation. It's more uh, a kind of neutral, almost grey tone. So it works quite nicely, really, um, in terms of blending in, especially when you then add some acrylic on top. And if you just are wanting to add almost a sense of texture, so I'm just like creating some dots and lines to uh, showcase the brickwork or cobbles or stones. <laughs> in whatever wonderful person had or people had come along and made a path one day uh, but then i'm gonna go more in on top with a coarse brush and some white acrylic paint and that's to get these speckles so just wiping it both sides 
and then patting on top. And you, you can do it like that. <laughs> it might take you some time. I actually prefer just to flick more directly. Um, I find like you get a bit more control over it. Um, and I quite like it if you get a pop of big globby bits like that. That's like foreground snow against some background snow, different depths of snow. <laughs> so, and I think just working with it, or working with different brushes can give you a real uh, variety of snow. Because you can get fine little bits or thicker bits. And, you know, snow's great. And if you want a real blizzard, or if you just want a fine drizzle of snow, uh, you can choose what you want. I love a bit of mess, though. So I'm all about this. <laughs> um, but also because uh, in terms of Oh, look at that big bit. If you want to add real highlights, you can use your acrylic um, to do that. So should we do a bit of that? Let's get a little. Just, uh, so maybe just at the peak of these and maybe in the moon. Let's do a bit of the moon. Nice highlight on the moon. Bit of texture. Lovely. And a highlight on the hill, actually. Let's do that. It's got little peaks. There we go. High points. Lovely. Might get that texture. Use up that bit of cobbliness. And then, really... The only thing you need to do next is allow it to dry. And once it's dried, you can take off the tape. If you want to, and we'll do a bit of that, um, is create a border with either your blue pen or if you want to have a more um, striking effect, your opposite color. So an orange would work quite nicely um, or something in between. Let's go with a blue, but where your edge is, you can just work within the lines around that border. And depending on how thick you want to go or thin you want to go, will create um, your border like a little frame for yourself. I'm going in quite thick. And if you want to, you can use that other colour and that will neutralise it, but also have little pops of highlight. Do you see how orange and the blue have made it really dark in the same way that um, purple and yellow work in that way? So this is dark frame but it's still within the colour scheme of these blues. And that ooh, <laughs> gives you a lovely little winter wonderland. I hope you've enjoyed that. We're just going to let this dry and I'll come back and show you this once it's all dry and ready for you. <laughs> and there we have it. This is our winter wonderland. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you've all had a lot of fun with this little exercise. Um, please do share your um, artworks with me and tag me if you're on Instagram. Let me see what you've created. I'd love to be able to see what you do with this. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. I hope to hang out with the big draw again sometime soon. 
have a wonderful festive period and I hope everyone has a really nice rest and gets to eat lots of lovely food. All right, take care. Bye bye.